Hello, welcome back to our machine learning course. Now in our previous video, we covered a range of different feature selection techniques. And by now you're probably wondering which one you should use for your data set. Well, there are some techniques which are typically better than others, but uh, the bottom line is that there's no surefire way to know which one is the best one until you actually try them out with the model you intend to use and using cross-validation to optimize uh, any choices you need to make. Um, so to do that, um, <clears throat> let's do this little analysis. We have here, uh, again, our importances. Uh, these are scale between zero and one. Here we have our features again. And we can play here with the threshold. Uh, this threshold is not so easy to compare between different methods. So I scaled this threshold so that 0 0.5 means that about half of the features are selected. Uh, a higher threshold means more are selected. Uh, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will all have the exact same number of features because that's not really possible. Uh, different methods like random forest, they look at the feature importance based on the, the position in the trees. Uh, linear models use their coefficients. F measures have, again, another way to do that. So there's no good way to... Uh, well, to uniformly compare them. So we'll just need to tune this threshold independently for every different technique. Now, just uh, to compare the techniques more or less on equal terms, we'll set this to 0 0.5 in the beginning, and later on we can we can tune the threshold a bit. Um, yeah, so we build a pipeline, first of all, where we first do feature selection, and at the end, our model will use rich here because it's fast. Um, but of course, you would have to replace this with the uh, method, the learner you intend to use in the end. Right? And now I need to find the optimal feature selection method with this model. Now, first of all, we can then look at the results of the F test. These are the features that are, um, well, these are the feature importances and in dark are the features which are selected. And here we see that Rich here has an R2 of 0.557, okay? Um, so that's reasonable, it's not super good. Um, this is also not such an easy data set, so it's a good start. Okay. Uh, also remember, we, we were using half of the features here, right? <clears throat> okay, now let's try uh, another method, like mutual information. So now we find it's quite a bit better. Um, so it's now 0.67 art squared. Uh, it selects different features, so most of the selected features are the same, but for instance, um, mission information also uses weekday and working day, um, and does not use, for instance, clear. Same number of features, more or less, but uh, much better performance. Okay, uh, that's, that's better. Then let's try random forest. So now we get 0.71, so that's even better. Uh, also, we see that the, the features have again changed. Random forests like cinematic features, so all the temperature, humidity is in here. Uh, wind speed is also good, but not good enough to be selected. Uh, then we have hour, year, rain, and so on. Okay, so 0.71, that's better. Then we'll try rich, that's not likely to be better. No, it's 0.6, that's only slightly better than the F score. Uh, less so, again. Or more, be more or less the same. So these these are unlikely to work well because it's not just a simple linear relationship here that we want to know. Um, RFE. So RFE, remember, that's uh, recursive feature elimination with inside Random Forest. Uh, that's um, quite better, I think. I think Random Forest was 0.71. So this is slightly better than the Random Forest. Right. Um, <clears throat> yep. Um, let's try more. Forward selection or wrapping technique. That's actually worse. Uh, you can try floating forward selection. That's, yes, yeah, slightly better. I think it's on par with uh, RFP. Yeah. And yeah, you can select, well, they don't select exactly the same features, but there's a big overlap. Interestingly here, um, so RFE does select 
both temperature and field, and, and, uh, field temperature, but floating forward selection has chosen to remove uh, field temp. So it's possible that at some point in the process, the floating forward selection did have both, but then at the end removed it again. And we have fermentation. That well, this is actually the best score we have until now. It's point seven four. Okay, so. If we have to select half the features, then permutation importance gives us the best result. And we see that, well, the features it selects are almost exactly the same as, uh, as a recursive feature elimination. Maybe this one let's see. Okay. Um, okay, now we can play the threshold. So let's try to move this up to 75. Okay, so now we see that our fee permutation points are at the same level. We could try also looking for it. Oh, this is much better. So this is 0.82. Um, yeah. So here we see the effect of the scaling parameter not being uh, easily comparable. So yeah, it is 0.82, but you can also see it selects more features, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's it. maybe one feature more. Looking at the floating forward selection also gives you very good results here. Uh, normal forward selection. Uh, same, well, slightly less. And then we have. Uh, Maybe lower in the forest, slightly worse in recursion. Okay, so what we can take away from this is that the best methods uh, on this data set at least uh, are permutation ports, sorry, per permutation importance, uh, floating forward selection, and in the forest. This, and sorry, in the recursive feature elimination. Typically, recursive feature elimination with in the forest is better than in the forest alone. So if you have to compute, uh, then RFP, well, RFP is more expensive, right? But if you have time to do the, to do, to do the calculations, then RFP will typically be slightly better than uh, no random forest selection. Right, cool. Um, so that's the analysis for this data set. Uh, so you now know the main techniques. Um, now let's see how you can use them in practice. So uh, second learner offers quite a bit of these. For unsupervised selection, there is the variance threshold. You just create it, you choose a threshold, like 0.01, uh, and then you do fit transform in the pipeline, and this will create uh, a new X, new feature, new data set X with only the second features. If you want to look at the variances, you can also ask for them. Like this. Uh, univariate methods. So for regression, you can choose between F regression and uh, mutual information for regression. For classification, you can choose between the S statistic, uh, chi squared test, uh, or the mutual information again. And for each of these scoring metrics, you have to choose a selection procedure. So you can select either the K best, uh, select percentile, or select uh, FPR, false positive rate, that's based on the p value. Uh, these can all be created uh, as usual. So, we, for instance, if you do uh, select percentile, uh, we create a select percentile operator. Uh, we then, the score function, we choose the one we want to use, for instance, a statistic for regression. This is the percentage of uh, features you want to keep. And then we do fit transform on the data, and it gives us our uh, reduced uh, data set X. If you want to see which feature are selected, you can ask for get support, and this returns to you a mask. Um, so an array of uh, true and false uh, booleans about which features are selected and which ones are not. For we can also get the scores directly. So if we do, if you run f regression on the data, we get the f, f values and p values, and we get the mutual information values in the same way with mutual info regression. Right. Um, the model based techniques uh, they are all used with select from model. So this is another operator. Uh, you have to give it the model that has to return to you the feature importances. 
This cannot be any model, but it can be any model that it shows to you uh, some feature importances. Um, so, you know, forest is fine, um, rich, lasso, all linear models, linear SVMs are fine. Uh, kernelized SVMs cannot do that, so they won't be. If you try to use that, it will give you an error. Uh, the threshold, uh, so this is the, the thing that's hard to interpret. So the threshold you have to set based on whatever the model returns to you. Uh, so for random forest, this is typically a small value like 0 0.05. Uh, for other methods, it can be uh, a bit different. Um, so to make it more or less palpable, you can also choose for the mean. It's so just uh, use the mean uh, importance observed over all the features. And uh, if you want to scale this up, you can also do two times the mean or three times the mean. Um, and it will, or that, that can increase or decrease the threshold. If you want to do recursive feature elimination, you can do it as well. Um, so here, well, here we use uh, rich, but you could also use run forest here. Um, you do have to select the number of features to select directly. Uh, if you want to use them, you have to again do fit transform your pipeline. Um, if you want the feature importances, you have to first fit the random forest or the rich uh, regressor and then ask for feature importances and then you'll get them back. Now, sequential feature selection is not in scikit-learn, at least not yet, but it's available in a package called ML Extent, uh, which has, well, it's an, it's a, offers a range of different algorithms. Uh, so it's fully compatible with scikit-learn. It's basically an extension of scikit-learn with some uh, lesser known, lesser used uh, algorithms. Um, so it's often useful whenever you want to do something that's slightly out of the ordinary. Uh, so you create uh, these uh, sequential feature sections with uh, this operator. operator. Um, so this is for doing uh, these wrappers, like forward selection, backward selection, or floating. Um, it's one operator for all, and it has multiple options. So this here is the model you use, your black box model uh, that you will evaluate. Um, the one you have in mind. So, well, for this, for the, for the, I don't know if I told this, but for the wrappers methods, you always take the method that you will use in the end, right? So, in this case, it doesn't make sense to optimize on rich and then use it, use the selected features for a random forest. You just always use the method that you want to use in the end here. You wrap it basically. Okay. Um, so, so you put in the method you want to use at the end. Uh, you use you choose a number of features you want to select. This uh, defines whether you want to do forward or backward selection. So true is forward selection, and this defines whether you want to do floating or not. Okay. Uh, then you fit transform again, and uh, you get the selected data set. Feature importances. Uh, since this is an inspection method, uh, this is in scikit learn inspection. Now, because it's not actually a, a transformer, it doesn't have a fit transform interface. So the way you use it is to call a permutation importance with a model. Uh, you then fit it on your training data. Uh, you can give a fitted model uh, to the procedure. You also give, again, the training data uh, and the number of repeats. Remember, you have to do this like, at least 10 times. And after that's uh, been done, you can get uh, all the importances, and you can uh, directly get the mean of them. This is the mean importances. And then, so this is just the, the importances of the features in the order that you gave them, so in the, in the order of x, in the order they occur in x. Uh, if you want to sort them from um, most important to least important, you can just do an arc sort. And it take the n most important features. Okay, so that's it for feature selection. I uh, hope you enjoyed the lecture, and I'll see you next time.